Welcome to Beyond Bite Wings, the business side of dentistry, brought to you by Edwards & Associates PC. Join us as we discuss how to build your dental practice, optimize your income, and plan for your future. This podcast is distributed with the understanding that Edwards & Associates PC is not rendering legal, accounting, or professional advice. Listeners should consult with their business advisors before acting on any of the information that is shared. At Edwards & Associates PC, our business is the business of dentistry. For help or more information, visit our website at enassociates.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Bite Wings. Today, we will be talking about in-house patient plans. And in here, within the studio, we have Robert Edwards. Hello. And Katie Franklin, who's going to be our guest speaker on our podcast episode. She's currently a program director at Smile Advantage, and she has a lot of educational information for you listeners out there. So Katie, would you mind introducing yourself to our audience? Yes, sure. I would be I would be happy to. So my name is Katie Franklin. I am the program director of a company called Smile Advantage. We are a nationwide company specializing in helping dental practices to see success from shifting away from being so insurance dependent by way of implementing their own in-office membership model. So we specialize in helping practices to design custom programs, and we also help them to track their programs with a cloud-based tracking software, as well as to promote their programs with unique custom marketing pieces that we create and design for them as well. Wow, that's outstanding. I think we're done. (laughs) (laughs) well well, tell me a little bit more about or tell the listeners a little bit more about you know smile advantage specifically and your history and how you got started in this and sort of give us a start here yeah sure so i actually started my dental career as an office manager in a small private practice in st louis missouri And it was in our practice about seven years ago that we just recognized that there was a real dilemma that our practice was up against, that major dilemma being dental insurance. And we were really frustrated with the drastic fee increases and all of the write-offs that we were being forced to incur. We really got fed up with, you know, the insurance companies really holding our hands and dictating the care that we could provide to our patients. And we had a lot of patients coming to us who were frustrated and confused and sick and tired of, you know, the the cost of their insurance plans and all of the limitations that they were up against. And so because of all these frustrations, we really decided at that time that a solution was warranted. And so we put our heads together, the doctor and I, and we decided to start our own in-office membership program, and we called it Smile Advantage. At the time, it was a membership program that we had just started for our practice. We saw tremendous success from it in a very short period of time. In fact, in our first 18 months of offering the program, we had 301 patients who signed on to be part of that membership. And our practice generated a new revenue of $330,000 in the first 18 months. We found that this, this concept of care, this membership program model, really is great at helping practices to attract and retain more fee-for-service patients. It's a way to motivate those patients to keep up with their routine, regular preventive care. And it's also a way to motivate them to do more treatment because of the membership discount that we were offering. And so because of that, my dentist decided to have two of his close colleagues, also private practice dentists, get on board with the concept. We helped to get similar programs up and going in their practices as well. And then those three dentists started our company. So, you know, I've been in the trenches with, you know, with a lot of front office dental team members. I know what it's like dealing with those frustrations day in and day Mm -hmm. out. 
And, you know, it's, it's, I'm very passionate now about what I do because it gives me great joy to be able to consult with and work with other dental practices, helping them to see the same kind of success from this model of care. So let me ask you a question. You said you had 301 patients that signed up in the first 18 months. And and typically, were those patients insurance patients or were they people that didn't have insurance or a combination of both or what? That's a great question, Robert. You know, we found that it was a combination of a lot of different dynamics of patients. So, of course, you know, we had a large percentage of those patients who were uninsured patients that were maybe coming to our practice once a year, maybe coming to our practice twice a year. There's an interesting statistic put out by the ADA that shows that patients who do not have dental insurance only visit the dentist once every 11 months. And that definitely was a struggle that we were up against, was trying to convince those uninsured patients to return for that second preventive appointment just because of the out-of-pocket expenses that they were going to incur. So we did have a lot of our uninsured patients convert over to this model, which of course helped with retention and getting them in more regularly. We actually reactivated 27 of our lost patients. So 27 of that 301 were patients who had been missing from our recare schedules anywhere between 18 to 24 months. And we created an email marketing campaign to reach out and target those lost patients and to invite them back to our practice, introducing to them the opportunity to be part of this membership club and showing them how it could save them money, um, which was never an option to them before. So that was a great way to kind of capitalize on the patients we already had, but to, you know, encourage them to come back in. And it was great at helping us to market our practice and to attract new patients, new fee-for-service patients to our practice. In fact, about 75 or 80 of those 301 were completely new patients to our practice from all of our marketing efforts. So let me ask you a question about that. I'm sorry. Yeah. When you have a, a, a prospective patient that calls on the phone, a new patient, And they say, you know, do you carry my insurance? I mean, that's what they all, they all make the call and it's like, well, you know, do you carry my insurance so I can come to you? Yes, it's the million dollar question. (laughs) So so how do you respond to that if you have an in-house membership program? Well, having the in-office membership program makes, makes fielding that question a lot easier just because, you know, we were, we were only in network with Delta. And so we, of course, never wanted to turn patients away by, you know, letting them know that, yes, we, you know, we accept all insurance. However, it would, it would be considered an out-of-network benefit because a lot of times that itself was a turnoff. But having the membership program model available was a nice segue into being able to say, like, yes, we submit to all insurances and we also offer our own in-office membership program model which a lot of our patients really like because they have found that it's cheaper than insurance plans and it oftentimes provides better overall coverage. And so that a lot of times would lead patients into, you know, wanting to inquire more about, well, well, what, like, what is that? How does it work? How much is it? So it definitely helped us to field that question more successfully. <laughs> So typically the dentist will design their program where the patients will pay the dentist either a monthly or an annual subscription fee. And by paying that subscription fee to the dental office, it usually will allow the patients to receive their preventive care services. So usually like their annual cleanings, their annual exams, their annual x-rays. And then in addition to that, Most of the time, dentists will also allow those member patients to receive a discount on any additional treatment. And we have seen that discount percentage fall in the ballpark of anywhere between 10 to 20 percent. And that would be a discount off of master fees. Okay, And and you mentioned on the front end that you help dental offices customize a plan. So. How do you, you don't have a cookie cutter approach. You have them customize their own plan. 
How does that work? Well, we start the process by just kind of getting to know the dynamic of the practice. And we do have an equation that we will give to the practices and we'll basically kind of challenge them to think like, you know, first of all, what type of plans do you want to offer? The three most standard plans that we see across the board are child, adult, and perio plans. So that's the first thing to decide is what plans do you want to offer? The next thing to think about is what services do you want to be included in each of your plans? And then based on those inclusions, that's when our equation comes into play, where it kind of helps them to determine their master fees what patients could expect to pay out of pocket for those included services and healthy membership fee range would be based on different discount percentages. So that's kind of the first step of the process is to really sit down and work with them to come up with a plan or a program that's really going to best meet the needs of that, you know, that individual practice and their clientele. And is there a family plan where you don't pay maybe as much for the whole family as a whole? There can be. Yeah. And that's a really good question. I will say that it's difficult to necessarily define a family plan per se, just because families are consisted of different numbers of people. And so for a practice to promote that they have a family plan for, let's just say 90 a year, and it covers up to four members, what are you going to do when the family of six walks in your door? How is the family of six going to be covered? So what we have found to be the most effective workaround to that question is when we are designing the member registration forms for the practices, what we'll suggest is that perhaps we can promote on their forms that the first member or the first two members of a family pay full price. And then each additional membership could be discounted by, let's just say, 50 or or $100. So it allows families to receive those additional savings when they are purchasing multiple plans. I was just going to talk about basically the implementation of this plan. So if we have listeners who are considering it, and they want to move forward with this, what are some of the factors that they may need to consider before implementing it? Or, you know, if if it's, I mean, you know, from a cost standpoint, you know, it may also add some additional work for the front desk people. How much of it would, you know, come into their decision before, you know, considering implementing such such a plan? So I think the biggest question that a practice needs to ask itself is, you know, are they on board with the concept of in-office membership? And, you know, a lot of times we have found practices where the doctor may love the Mm -hmm. idea of membership, but the team may not be super open to promoting it. And those are honestly the practices that, that struggle with the concept, because even though it's available and readily accessible, if the team doesn't believe in it and they're not on board to help promote it, it's not going to take off and be successful and have the potential that it, you know, that it can ultimately have. So I think the first step is to really help the team to understand what membership is and how membership can make their jobs easier, how it can increase their profit margins, how it can make their patients happier how it can allow them to provide the care to their patients that they need and deserve. And I think once we get past that point, then it's all about figuring out, you know, what's going to work for your practice. And a lot of times, you know, having the front office kind of involved in the customization process of the program can be super effective just because a lot of times they're the ones that know best what insurance is doing to the bottom line. They also Mm -hmm. oftentimes are the ones that hear what the patients are complaining about and what the patients are asking for. So the first step would be to, you know, help them understand membership and be on board to promote it. The next step would be to customize their program. From there, we design and print all of their materials that they're going to need to administer and market their program. We also design and develop for them a cloud-based tracking software to help easily administer and manage the program. 
so that it doesn't become one more daunting thing for the front office to have to keep up with. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about our tracking software is that it does fully integrate with any practice management software. So Mm -hmm. if the office is using EagleSoft, for example, software will manage their membership program. It will process the membership payments those to their patients' EagleSoft accounts for them. And then above and beyond kind of getting all of the nuts and bolts ironed out, we will do a training with the staff just to get Mm -hmm. everyone on board to comfortably and confidently be able to promote this as an option to their patients and, of course, show them how to use the tracking software. And then we do provide ongoing unlimited support. And that's one of the things as a company we really pride ourselves on is just how well we're able to take care of our customers to help them see success from from a membership program. We have an amazing marketing team based out of Arizona. And a lot of our practices will request, you know, custom unique marketing pieces or campaigns to be designed for them. And that's all included. You know, there's no fees for any of that. So ongoing, we're, you know, available to them and able to do any of those extra things as well. Oh, that, that's that's great information. Now, have you ever been in a situation where it didn't make sense for a practice to implement this program? That's a great question. That, and that's another question I get asked a lot. Doctors ask me all the time, you know, what type of practice should consider a membership program? Mm-hmm. And so the, the short answer to your question would be, no, it, it can honestly make sense for any dynamic of a practice. You know, obviously for practices that are contracted with lots of PPOs, a mm-hmm. lot of times, you know, they're looking to possibly get out of some of those PPOs just because it's costing them money to be in network with all those insurance companies. Mm-hmm. So prior to making those transitions in a practice, we strongly suggest that practices consider doing their own in-office membership program first so that as you do start to break the news to your patients that you can still see them and you can still submit to their insurance. It'll just be submitted as an out-of-network claim versus an in-network claim. A lot of times in those scenarios, it will make more sense for the patient to just drop the insurance and to convert over to the office's membership model. Obviously, for new dentists who are, you know, acquiring a new practice, Mm -hmm. this is essentially a subscription model. This is a way to create loyalty with your patients, especially those patients who are meeting you for the first time. So this will also work well for retiring dentists. And in fact, they're probably my favorite group to deal with just because initially, They love to give me a hard time and I like to challenge them right back. They oftentimes will tell me that they're old, they're tired, that they, if they try to implement one more thing, their team will go nuts. And that if they would have met me 10 years ago, they would have been all over this idea, but this just doesn't make sense for them right now. And I always remind them that it's never too late to start something great. And what I mean by that is If they can have a well-established membership program in place now, it has the potential to significantly increase their profit margins. So when they do look to sell in, let's just say, three to five years, having a program like this in place can help the practice to appraise for a higher value if you are able to increase those profit margins over the course of the next few years. Plus, we have found that all of these potential buyers out there that have been acquiring new practices, they are very excited to learn about membership programs that are already established. So they're going to be excited when that retiring doc tells them about the membership program that they offer versus the doctor handing them a list of the 20 PPOs that they're in network with. And typically, how long does this program take to be implemented? Yeah, so on average, I would say it takes practices about three to four weeks to fully get up and going. But the quickest that we can do it is a minimum of two weeks. Okay, and I have a question about, you said this is really something that almost every office can use. But what about if you have a true fee-for-service practice? Why would you start a membership program? Well, you know, the the number of fee-for-service dentists is dwindling. You know, about a year and a half ago, the, the percentage was about 7%. And we've seen in the last year that the number of fee-for-service patients left, fee-for-service practices left, 
is down to about 6%. Mm. And, you know, I truly believe that the reason why we see that number decreasing from year to year is just because of how much our profession is evolving and all of the changes that we're up against. And, you know, it's, it's a challenging world out there. It's a little cutthroat, if you will. And I think these fee for service docs are starting to recognize that in order to continue to be successful, they're going to need to make some changes. They're going to need to do something. And oftentimes, you know, the only thing that they really know to do is to market their practices by way of joining the insurance networks. But a membership program gives them the courage and the ability to do something before going down the path of joining any of those insurance networks. And then I have, I think, maybe two questions, and I think we're kind of going to have to wind up here. But one is DSOs. Now, that's not always a bad word. Right, right. <laughs> my, my question is, will a membership program work for a DSO? It sure does. In fact, we have a we have a handful of smaller DSOs that work with our company. So yeah, absolutely it can work for them. And you know, we have some DSOs that have designed the same plan among all of their practices. And we have other DSOs that have done custom programs for each of their practices. So it's just a matter of of what they want and what they're looking for and what they're hoping to get out of doing something like this. Yes, it absolutely works for them. Okay. And then the biggest question of all, if I'm the doctor and you're talking to me about developing the, this type of plan, what am I going to ask you? I'm going to ask you, what's it going to cost me? <laughs> right. Biggest question. <laughs> yes. Yep. So that's um, what I can tell you there is, you know, Robert, we've always tried to take care of your clients because we, you know, we really appreciate and you know, respect one another and like the partnership that we have with your firm. We do have a one-time setup fee of $695. But anyone listening to this podcast and any of your clients, Robert, we're always willing to waive our setup fee for. We actually have two different tiers in terms of pricing. We have a $249 a month plan that's considered our premium plan. And then we have a $49 a month plan that's considered our basic plan. With our $249 a month plan, that's the whole kit and caboodle. So that's, you know, the custom printed marketing materials, the member registration forms, the software, the marketing, the training, the ongoing support, that's everything. With the $49 a month program, those are for offices that perhaps maybe they already have their own membership program in place and all they're really looking to add is a tracking component. Or maybe they have, you know, a marketing team that they're working with and they feel that they can, you know, use their marketing team to kind of help them promote their membership program. And again, all they're really wanting out of us is the software component. So the $49 a month plan is the basic software license that allows them to have access to that cloud-based tracking software. So for, so for your premium plan for $249 a month, that's, mm-hmm. that's it. That's, that's nothing. That's it. I mean, really, it's incredible. It is incredible. It's it's great value for a very low price. And, you know, I'll tell you, you know, we all have competitors, right? So, of course, we have competitors as well. And, you know, what I've learned and what I've heard about a lot of the other companies out there is they are charging doctors a per member per month fee or percentage for the program. And I can just tell you from talking with practices that have converted over to us from our competitors you know, those those models start to escalate and become very expensive very quickly. Obviously, the idea of a membership program is to grow your practice and to increase the number of fee-for-service patients in your practice. And so we definitely don't want that to be a deterrent for you. We want to encourage you to grow this thing. And that's why our flat monthly fee is a lot more affordable and a lot more feasible. We're not out to nickel and dime the doctor that we work with. Well, and, and under those other plans, the bigger you grow, the more it's going to cumulatively cost you every month, which is just ridiculous. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, tell people how to get in touch with you for more information other than calling our firm. How can they get in <laughs> touch with you? Sure, sure. So my cell phone number, which anyone is welcome to call me or text me on is area code 314-885-4640. They can also email me directly. 
back to my first name, Katie, K-A-T-I-E, at smileadvantage.com. I mean, if you go on our website, mysmileadvantage.com, you can actually book a demo with me online as well. Well, that's outstanding. We really appreciate you being with us today. Thanks for doing it on short notice. And Yeah, um, absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, Robert. Sure, you bet. Ash, you want to close? Yes, absolutely. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much again. And yes. to all our listeners out there, if you guys have any questions and want to reach out to us, please do so via email. Our email is info at eandassociates.com. We look forward to hearing from you. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to Beyond Bite Wings on your favorite podcast platform. For more info, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, or reach out to us on our website. You can also shoot us an email at info at eandassociates.com.